Okay, good evening. Um, so today we will continue. So today we, the plan is to do two things. The first one is to continue with this set of slides and hopefully to complete them uh, well before 7 p.m. obviously. And because in the, well, no matter, in the last, uh, because tomorrow, maybe also today, but especially tomorrow, we will start speaking of uh, voice user interface uh, in general, and then we will move to how to realize uh, voice user interface from a practical point of view, also with web technology. And before starting to speak about uh, uh, voice user interface, what uh, I would like to do, if, if I can, uh, is to have you uh, try interact together or not with this. This that is not recorded, obviously, uh, is uh, an Amazon Hiko, a Hiko Dot, the smallest and uh, cheaper uh, Amazon Hiko. So hopefully my idea is at the end of this slide trying to spend five minutes to uh, connect these to the wireless network of Politecnico that is something that it requires five minutes at least and and then with you try to understand how it works when it doesn't and why and why not so that you have a we have you are all on the same page when we start speaking on voice a user interface tomorrow and how many of you used uh, in the in their life one things like this one two four okay so you are the power user here in this so okay this is the second part the first part is to complete this last time we stopped uh, basically here we were speaking about multimodal interface uh, so about uh, having uh, human input uh, capabilities, the five senses, the sensories, part of humans in, involved in user interfaces, also for universal access, and also to have what we call the, the human output capability, like touching things and uh, interacting with voice and with eyes, with gaze on screen with computers. So today we will complete that part. We stopped here uh, last time. Let me get back one, one slide. Uh, we were speaking about the gesture as a way to interact with uh, uh, a computer system. And we have seen these two examples very briefly in the end about camera-based gesture system that uses a computer vision and image processing technique to realize the interaction. The first one was uh, this one here is a BM, it's a, for a car, it's a gesture control for the infotainment system in which you can wave your hand in front of the infotainment system and it should react in some way. And the second one is the lip motion that is this uh, object here that, that nowadays is put in a virtual reality headset to track the user hand in the virtual environment. And uh, we also see this as a gesture, as an example of a gestural interface that doesn't use uh, camera, but use this radar based system based on a prototype and on a project that's called Project Soli by Google Advanced Technology and Project Group. That is a miniature radar that uses machine learning and other things to detect the movement of hands and is the first this is the first uh, let's say commercial application is in a pixel 4 phone that is in on the market i would say right now um, i would like just just to use this as an example so first of all this is about the gesture system in the car. So first question, just to recap, is this a multimodal system or not? 
it's the infotainment system you wave your hand in front of it and to change music to select things to answer to the phone is multimodal or not in your opinion yes and which elements uses to be multi multimodal is there some redundancy in the interaction either input or output or not you think so <laughs> yeah i i think also so and which kind of inter of uh, redundancy we have we, we may have Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if there is a voice system, but maybe it's reasonable. Uh, this is for output, right? And for input, there is a redundancy, in your opinion, or not? Maybe a touch screen. Something. Yeah, probably it's touchable. Yes, it's touch screen. And then it's, uh, it's in a car. This is just one minute, but probably at a certain point, yeah, we will see. And so this is a system you do this gesture and you can also control your navigation and calls I, I really hope that this is not working while you are driving but who knows and you wave this well you can increase the volume and here there is a camera that basically look here at the top of your shoulder and this area in front of the infotainment system because it's the area that it where it looks for some gesture and well this is um, with some also hints how to do this uh, and so on and this is also multimodal because you you are in a car and you have also buttons the traditional buttons are still there so you can wave your hand in front of this you can probably touch as a touch screen the the screen of this uh, system but uh, uh, you also have button on the car to stop and reproduce music to change the radio station so traditional let's say control are already pre uh, still present so it's uh, one more way to do the same things that you did before mm? just just to give you uh, so even if they are not here as a button they are still inserted in the system. They are in the car close to that. So you can press a button, you can, uh, on the steering wheel, you can act on this system as well. Maybe it may also have, or in the, in the future, we also have voice, so you can maybe also interact with this. Uh, another car maker has a voice system instead of this waving uh, uh, thing. Okay. So that those example closes the um, gesture part. So we can start speaking of the last uh, topic, last, last but two, last but one topic that is hearing. So we have seen visual and gaze, gesture and haptic, and we are missing hearing and voice, basically. So hearing is all about sound and is as we have as I told you last time uh, is the second most important sense that we are using the first one is vision the second is hearing because it sound can convey a remarkable amount of information about our environment so here there is a suggestion maybe don't do this here at this time but if you are in a, in a place and you try to close your eyes and listen, you perceive a lot of information from the environment and his surrounding. Because they hear, as a human being, can differentiate a lot of sound changes, also very, very small, and can recognize familiar sounds also with, when we are concentrating on other things. If someone that is familiar to you is calling you, you probably also, if you are, you are studying, you probably turn your head and try to to get to, to response to to respond to these people to this person however while it's used in the in the real world it's rarely used in user interface design especially in graphical user interface design 
and is typically confined to notification, warnings, typing sound, and the sound that the trash bin made when you delete a file or move a file and so on. Obviously, multimedia is an exception. Sound is predominant in video, audio system, uh, video games, and so on. When we speak about hearing, we speak of voice, probably, because voice is something that you hear, but also we speak about sound, non-vocal sound, <laughs> that are the ones that are used in contemporary interface and are used typically, again, to provide the transition information, warning, events, the successful completion of an operation, a computer, and so on. And the sound must be learned in a way you know that a specific sound on your smartphone is a WhatsApp message, or you choose that sound. But there is a very, very small learning phase, because you choose or you learn that, that that is the WhatsApp sound, and another one is the Telegram sound, and another one is an email sound, or whatever. They must be learned, but conversely, they are language independent. The same sound of an uh, email that is arriving is the same here in the United States, in China, in, uh, in South Africa, or anywhere in the world, probably. So it's the same sound. While the language and the context may change, the sound can be more independent from that. Uh, and sound, in the scientific literature, demonstrates that sounds, non-vocal sounds are really, really useful. So, for instance, I make the, here three examples. Uh, auditory cues, uh, so this sound, the non-vocal sound, are discovered to be adequate to help navigating a screen, a space on a screen, and an immersive virtual environment. So if you are blind, temporarily blind, and you see sound when you move something on a screen, or if you move in an environment, you understand, you learn that if you go, for instance, to the, the virtual version of that door, a certain sound is uh, played, <coughs> while if you go in this other side, that <coughs> another sound is played, and so you can distinguish where you are going and what is happening in the environment. Uh, <coughs> and this is just an example. Another example is that uh, a study demonstrated that uh, when you type on a, on a keyboard, like a smartphone keyboard, if you have the sound on, you typically made fewer mistakes than without the sound. Because this is a cue that helps you concentrate and see if everything was correct and you typed the, the right key or not. Video games. Video games are harder without sound. Probably also less pleasant but surely harder without sound, without any sound. Mm? Sounds in video games are really helping to set the stage and to immerse people in the game, in the environment, to have player really concentrate on it. And in computer system, in computing system, we can choose between two kinds on vocal sound, that they have a noun, a name, the first one are natural sound, and the second one are not natural sound. So natural sound uh, are called auditory icons in computer system, and they were born, well, in the, in the, in the early 80s by a designer of the Apple's Finder. So for for people that never use a Mac, Finder is the, let's say, Mac equivalent of the Windows Explorer on Windows. So these auditory icons are basically caricatures of naturally sound. And if you, yeah, laughter. And again, this sound have associated some semantic that can be mapped onto similar meaning in the interaction. So, for instance, if you call a number on Skype, often, or in some version at least, you hear a sound like a phone, a real, a normal phone, traditional phone that is calling, 
that is not a natural sound in the meaning that is was created by the nature is artificial but is a common sound not related to computer system is the, the sound that the telephone is doing it, it's just reproduced in a video conference system to recall that sound as information the semantic if you heard the sound you know that the call is in progress and that you are effectively calling the a person and it's not any it's a feedback a very very small feedback that the process is going on is not stopped for any problem and this is totally fine for something like the telephone if other things are more difficult because they don't have a typical sound associated and for some of that we created we associate a sound uh, moreover for these auditory icons in some cases we can also use additional information so for instance stereo sound to allow positional information in a user system in a computing system or muffled sound if an object is in the ground or is less important than another we can use it for instance a natural sound for something that is in the ground or of a computer system while we have a more prominent sound for something in the foreground if these two sounds happen in the same time the second one is in the background is more is muffled is more it's, it's less prominent and uh, example of auditory auditory icons and this is I, I avoided to to add some example while speaking because I would like to hear hear about you uh, hear you about this a couple at least of auditory icons that you experiment on, on your computer for instance except Skype or similar obviously the trash bin when you empty the trash bin you hear up let's say it's called a natural sound or I don't know it's paper or someone say that is uh, a glass that is breaking but it's a, a sound that we typically associate to the emptiness of the trash bin at least on computer systems so we heard that sound and it's quite a natural sound for us and we know that the action has been performed correctly another example that that one is the most famous one probably if you have any idea you take a photo yeah, yeah and the shut the shutter sound yeah. <coughs> yeah that is another example so th these are auditory icons because they resemble <coughs> sorry resemble <coughs> natural that doesn't mean a natural from nature but uh, say analog sound not in the computer world hmm? and then we have another kind of non-vocal sound that are called hearcon hearcon use synthesized structured sound to represent a specific event or signal new information they are called hearcon because it's a pun on the more familiar term hycon because hycon is written like highs and highs here they replace high con here and they have this here con this is again something in 1985 the, uh, it's it's not sure who invent, invented this term uh, because in this year uh, two papers came out that you more or less closely in the period that uses the same term to make a pun to the high cone and to present this here cone like structured synthetic sound mm -hmm. differently from the the previous one they have no direct relationship with again natural event analogs event not computerized event mm -hmm. so we have to learn the meaning again very very small learning but still a learning and here are typically composed by motive that are short 
rhythmic sequences of, pitch, of pitches of variable intensity, quality, register, and dynamics, and they are used to add context, helping the user maintain awareness. Like before, example. This is probably a little bit more difficult, but some simple here con should be familiar to everybody. Yeah, the sort of sound of a computer could be a hear cone hmm? because it's a, uh, it's a structured sound that helps you to understand that the specific event is going well, <coughs> for instance. Anything else? Sorry. Yeah. I was thinking if there is a natural representation of that, but uh, probably, probably not. The notification from uh, an app yeah. or a messenger. The notification from uh, the sound of notification <laughs> of an email or a message are typically um, hear cones, non vocal sound. Okay, so <coughs> while for sound, we basically split between uh, hear cone and auditory icons for computer system, and then we have all other kind of sound, music, uh, like the, the tone that you put for your, when your smartphone is ringing. This is music, obviously. Uh, we also have, connected to hearing, to speak about voice, and speech. So first of all, what is the difference between voice and speech? If any. Kind of. You are close. It's the last part. It has a sense that it's meaningful, that it's not totally true. Yeah, more close. Yeah. Uh, voice is about making sounds, let's call it, with your mouth. That, that sound could also have a meaning. Why not? If I say, mm hmm you probably understand wh what they want to, to say, to represent. So it, it, can, it can have a meaning as well. Speech is instead what I'm doing now. I'm speaking a language with some structure, uh, with its ambiguity, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So just to, to follow what is written here voice as human voice is obviously an efficient input modality for humans because well it allows people to communicate and with respect to computer it allows people to give commands to computer quickly and when it works on their own terms you don't have to learn how to uh, tell a person that uh, I don't know. That is right on something because you know how to explain that. You may choose the right word according to the person, according to the context, but you know your choices and you know how to uh, express that. Uh, but again, speech and language, de language dependent it may also be ambiguous. Otherwise, we will not have lawyers if it's not ambiguous. Speech and also languages in general. For what concern computer system fully understanding natural language still remain, let's say, a dream. We don't have a full 
for a computer system a full understanding we cannot have a computer system that has a full understanding of human language in general in the last year we we as a computing community did a lot of work several steps in the right direction but the full understanding is another thing and obviously voice and speech interaction become mainstream in the recent year especially thanks to siri google assistant alexa and all these uh, conversational assistant while we also have voice and speech interaction maybe simpler than with these uh, devices already in our environment do you think do you call into your mind uh, a place in which you may have speech interaction very simple speech interaction let's say 10 years ago 15 years ago it's a closed place that moves hopefully it's bad for the environment they say no cars a lot different various model of cars have since let's say 10 years a button that you can press and say call this person from my, from my telephone uh, rubric and it's calls it's very simple because you have to say call someone and that someone must be the same that is written in your rubric or uh, set the temperature to 21 degree the internal air, air conditioning system a again you have to say tell the set the temperature to something degree otherwise it doesn't work so very simple not a lot basically no conversation no interaction at all but it's something that exists uh, from the part of recogn recognizing speech from let's say 10 or more years also in not particularly expensive cars and also by phone some system maybe don't recognize your voice but surely perform some speech synthesis hmm? uh, where you call some number for theme or vodafone you may say ah say one if you want to hmm? some system already work in that way also for the part of recognition in addition to press in alternative to press a number uh, so such application all of these try to simulate a natural language interaction obviously at a different level and for different motivation in any case also these theory google assistant the most let's say sophisticated way require always require people to learn a set of spoken command to be understood so in the example of the car probably this set of commands are like three uh, with this uh, assistant the set of command are maybe like 1000 but they only recognize those and small variation about those so and this is one i will anticipate you this is one issue with voice user interface learnability from one side and expectation that are not met from the other side uh, before going on let me make a disclaimer about this here we are not speaking only if you want about these things here about siri google assistant alexa cortana or whatever we are generally speaking of systems computing system that use voice and speech also way less sophisticated than that than those and all the things that we will see here may apply to that and also may apply to simpler things so for instance no, after Another example after. Uh, 
So voice-based interaction from a computer perspective is essentially two things. Speech recognition, transforming speech in text, and speech synthesis, transform text into speech. At the very essence is these two things. So when we speak about voice, we are speaking about recognition and synthesis. And then in some cases, some application, like the uh, conversational assistant we have cited before, they may add an additional layer that is about natural language processing or natural language understanding. But the typical step is the person saying something, this is transformed into text, something take this text and try to understand to process to understand what is written in the, in the text and try to provide a suitable answer to that test that after is synthesized again as speech this is the whole flow for voice-based interaction and we can also have system that have only speech recognition and only system that speech synthesis and system that use natural language processes without speech like chatbots telegram chatbots for instance you type you write you don't speak typically and all combination of this but overall you may have these three steps and here are two examples i choose two simple examples just not to speak always of theory and and company uh, well, the first one, I think that I can open it, is sp speech recognition. Yeah, in Chrome. So let's try to. Okay. So. Okay. Ah. No. I'm trying to use this. So it needs to have the microphone really close. And more or less it work. And <clears throat> so you see here uh, two possible problem. Uh, and then <laughs> okay, uh, you you may see here a couple of different problems. First of all, uh, one thing that I, I didn't do is using any command obviously also here you have commands full stop comma is new line is not something that the system have to write on screen it's something that have to put a point to create a new line to start a new paragraph these are commands that this system sh should know and here there is speech recognition commands for instance that uh, so for instance new paragraph create a new paragraph hmm? so if you say new paragraph in a text probably is complex to use this but so this is the first thing the second thing is that this uh, uh, processing uh, speech to, to text and uh, the speech to text system is dependent on the language they set up they set up american english they set up english uk english or Australian English or whatever and they assume that the microphone is very nice it's working well and for instance when I tried this last week with the microphone or the computer it works way better than with this probably because this is more open as a space and I'm moving my hand with a microphone so I, I create some noise probably 
and, and this is the second uh, the other one i i don't i cannot i, I can open the other one where is a uh, voice-based interaction on google translate on google translate there is no speech recognition but there is speech synthesis you never noticed there is a button yeah <laughs> when you write something there is a button here that pronounce the same sentence that you are in the right language that you are translated i cannot reproduce the, this because this microphone is also acting as a headset so you will not see hear anything but you can try it on so again this is very very general this apply to uh, more complex system and also simple system like this obviously voice-based interaction has some huge opportunities and some huge limitation always in general hmm? so when is successful spoken interaction is successful typically when user have all physical impairments also temporary hmm? i cannot uh, i i, I personal story I have this in my kitchen and I use this to turn on the lamp the light turn on and off the light when I have something some plates in the hand so I cannot press the button on on wall I have to put down the, the dishes press the button and take again to move another room with this you can obviously say uh, whatever it is Alexa turn off the light or turn on the light also in distance so it's it could be useful also for temporary it's not a, a real huge use case i know but it also could be useful for temporary physical impairment in that in that occasion i cannot use my hand because they are busy that is the second point when the speaker hands are busy or when mobility is required i have to move around but perform this operation probably speaking uh, connected when i cannot use a keyboard for any reason or when the application domain vocabulary and task is limited a very as uh, like in the car example it's really it's quite simple it's just matching a word set temperature to a number so the processing is quite simple and you just have to learn three or four sentences not a lot uh, again also when the user is enabled to read or write not only for impairments but also for instance because it's a children it's a child they are children they can maybe interact with the computer system without reading or writing but just speaking so these are cases in which a speak spoken interaction is was successful in general and obviously it also encounters some issue that the designer of a computer system should tackle in designing the system also for the very simple speech recognition system like for instance interference from noisy environment or poor quality microphone because things happen around you if you are close, close to a very busy street you have a lot of noise and if you want to use a speech recognition system it could be troublesome these are probably great at home if you imagine this in a bar probably it doesn't work very well because there is a lot of noise uh, obstacles commands need to be learned and remembered if they are three or four it's easy if they are more than that probably a little bit little bit less and commands may change so let think about the speech recognition example of before to create a new paragraph you have to say new paragraph or whatever it is other sentences maybe in another system dragon dictation you have to use other commands so you have to learn how to use the program every time differently if uh, even if you speak and even if you know that new paragraph is equivalent to another sentence for instance 
uh, recognition might be challenged, speech recognition to text might be challenged to strong accent or strange vocabulary, like slang, for instance. Uh, obviously, talking is not always acceptable as a system during meeting is an example also for privacy in a bar also for privacy issue maybe there are some things that you cannot you don't want to say out loud because they are private intimate things uh, error correction can be time consuming while speaking if you wrote a sentence like the one that the system wrote before it was totally different from what i'm saying how can i recover from error there without using a keyboard it's not easy maybe it's also not supported by some system you have to use a keyboard to recover from that system uh, obviously since you have to learn something so remember something the cognitive load as human being is bigger than just typing or point and clicking on the screen and some operation like math like programming are inherently inherently difficult by voice it's not they are not impossible but they are more difficult than by writing uh, an equation on a piece of paper a and so on so for designing a general voice-based interaction there are typically six steps that enter in the entire process, in the entire flow, speech recognition, optional uh, language understanding and speech synthesis. So there is the initiation phase, pressing the start button on the example or using a wake word hmm, like uh, OK Google or Alexa. Hmm. It's a wake word that turn on the entire system second you have to know what to say if i give this amazon eco to a person that never see that what are you saying to this probably what time is it that's that's reasonable but it's not really probably useful so you have to know what to say and again learnability is in general one of the main issue of voice-based interaction especially those the, the mimic closely try to mimic closely natural language uh, then recognition errors speech to text they happen how to recover so in english if you say dime or time it's very very close then you have to correct errors how to correct and if you have maybe a little more, little bit more complex system but also the speech recognition you have to map the recognized sentence to the right action so in the system before if i say new paragraph the system have to know that the mapping to new of new paragraph is not to write a new paragraph like any other word but to create a new paragraph to perform an action on this conversational assistant if i say what time is it the right answer is to say it's 6 30. and it's not to say you are in theory because it's not the question and finally the sixth step to have in mind for all the system is to have feedback dialogues to recover from error to be sure to confirm that direct action is about to start or is started so for instance in the speech recognition system that we have seen before an option could be i say new paragraph and the, the software told me do you want to start a new paragraph or do you want to write a new paragraph say one for the first one and second for the second the or two for the other option for instance or maybe not maybe just create a new paragraph and you have to say you have to write a new paragraph you have some problem you probably have to write on a keyboard a new paragraph to to reach the right action in that specific context and this is also another example of uh, why natural language understanding is complex 
because I can say natural pa uh, new paragraph because I want to write a new paragraph or because I want to create a new paragraph. So if I'm, for instance, writing by speaking the instruction for that software, I would like to write something. You have to say new paragraph to create a new paragraph. But with that software, the result will, will be, if you have to say starting a new paragraph to create and starting again a new paragraph. So it's something that has some problem, mapping problem, feedback problem, and so on. Okay? This is, again, in general. Uh, the last thing I would like to, to speak with, about you about voice is about screen reader. We have seen last time the braille display for uh, allowing people who are blind, this thing here, to read the braille code. That hardware device needs a screen reader. Also, people who are blind and want to interact with the computer system may use a screen reader. A screen reader is very simply a software application for handling vocal synthesis or braille display to navigate, to interact with a computer system. So for instance, by passing that from one icon to another or from a window to another window or from a button on a user interface to another and receive information of the context in which the person is vocally or through the braille display. Uh, it's nowadays built in in mobile operating system. So if you have an Android smartphone, you have a talkback installed, probably deactivated, but installed and ready to start on your uh, computer. And uh, on iPhone and iPads, it's, uh, it's voiceover. It's also available on macOS. In other operating system, you have to download a dedicated screen reader these are the two most famous. And uh, here you have two, two videos of this. Basically, screen reader, again, I cannot show you because they are vocally and they have this. And so you will not he hear anything. Maybe before using Alexa, I can play a little bit this, this video. But the idea is that you continuously scan what is like Imagine to have a matrix on your screen and you scan linearly from the first square in the top to the second to the third and so on for the entire screen. So you look here and then here and then here and so on. And so the screen reader found this and say screen reader. And if you don't do any action, it go over and say other famous screen reader dot and FDA, HTTP, it reads everything. If you want to perform some operation, you have to obviously interact with that and say or press something to confirm or to create the action linked to that. Uh, since we are a human computer interaction course and you uh, will realize a web based user application, let me say that a lot of websites nowadays are inaccessible to screen reader users nowadays website on the web not just prototypes and if you have time just five minutes i think it is a learning experience to try one screen reader on a website of your choice just to see better to hear what happens just close your eyes take your phone turn on voiceover. Also, you can also turn on voiceover or tech back to navigate, obviously, in the menus of your phone. That should work better than a website because it's more controlled by the producer of the, of the operating system. But try it on a website of your choice, even the website of this university, and see what you can do or not. It's just a, a trial for your curiosity. Okay, so this close this set of, uh, of slides. 
I will stop the recording now and we will do two things. The first one is seeing the video of a screen reader, uh, a small pieces of it, and then I will set up this to connect to Polito network that is required five minutes more or less um, because it continues to disconnect to the network. And how many of you don't speak nor understand anything of Italian? Because this is in Italian, just, just this. <laughs> it's set up in Italian, so we cannot speak in English. You, you can imagine, yeah. We can translate, okay? So, let me stop this and we will do these two things. <laughs> 